Hey everyone, this is Curtis Brown. I'm here with a Smart Space video and I'm uh, really excited to get things started with you guys here. I'm joined here today by Dr. Jones and we're going to be talking. Hey, doc, Dr. Jones? Hey, Dr. Hi. Jones, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm sorry. I haven't eaten yet, so I'm really hungry and I've been trying to make this fruit salad. So just give me one second. Okay, well, give me one second. But hey, um, do you realize we were supposed to be teaching today, right? We're talking about ratios? Yeah, I mean, okay. You see, I'm just trying to, it would take me like two seconds to eat this and or to put it together. Look, look, look. I have like two apples that have been cut up, right? All right. And then I got these little cutie oranges. I got, I got like <laughs> three of these cutie oranges peeled up. And then I have some blueberries. I have 10 of these blueberries. Oh, they're so good. And I have five strawberries, but I only have three grapes. Oh no, these are five. I have five grapes and yeah. I'm trying to like, I don't have enough grapes, but if well, I can get this done, then I can talk about the math. So what if I, guess what I've got? I've got a, I've got a thing of grapes. If I can figure out a way to give you these grapes, can we talk about math? Uh, okay. How are you going to give All them right. to me? Then? So here, I'm going to try to pass these over here to you. Does that work? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So that there we great. go. So does that help? Did I give you enough grapes there? That helps great. That helps great. You know, actually, this kind of makes you think about math. This is kind of like yeah. ratios, right? Yeah, it so does. So just with grapes, like, okay, you gave me about, let's see, there's 25, like 25 grapes. Okay. So look at this. I'm going to use my wall. All right. So you gave me like 25 grapes. 25 That's grapes. That's true. And I have five grapes. Okay. So if we're talking about ratios, I could write this as a ratio of your grapes to the ratio of my grapes. Okay. Now this isn't exactly the full ratio because all ratios need to be in lowest terms. So we have okay. to like divide both of these so we can bring them down because they have a factor in common. Do you know what that factor is? They look like they have a factor in common. So we're going to be like taking this, uh, this ratio. This is like a one way to write this ratio and we're going to try to take it down to like its smallest set of units right 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 exactly so, what's so they have, to, they, to me it looks like they have five in common yes 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 so if i divide both by five i'm really looking at the ratio of five to one sure. your grapes okay. to my grapes right yeah yeah i like that it's okay. kind of cool so I mean, this is my favorite way of writing ratios, but there is two other ways you can write them. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about them? Yeah. So if I wanted to, I could write the ratio instead of with the colon, I could write it with the fraction. Oh, okay. So I could write it with the five over one. Okay. So the value of that would be like the value of this ratio, right? Like exactly. The value of it. Okay. And they have the same uh, units. So we have five grapes over one grape. It just means your grapes versus my grapes. And the okay. value is still five. It's still the same uh, ratio. It's just written as a fraction. Okay. So I had five grapes to every one of your grapes. Yes. Now we're talking. So, because you had more. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I just. I just happened, I didn't have two kids at home eating the grapes like you did. So my yeah. kids didn't eat all of, all of the grapes. I had some left over. So we're but good. But think about it. I like what you just said. You said five grapes to every one of mine. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the third way you can write ratios. You can write okay. it with the word two. So your five grapes to every one of my grapes. Right, right. So we can write it any one of those ways. Yeah, that works. That's really good. That's yep. super cool. So in terms of my salad, this was a part to part because we're dealing with part of my salad. So a part to part ratio, your grapes and then my grapes. But we can actually do a ratio that's part to whole, like okay. the grapes part to the total amount of fruit in my fruit salad. Okay. You want to try that? Can you run us through? Yeah, let's run us through that again because I've forgotten. I think you had like two apples. Yeah. Right? So I have, well, I have 30 grapes now. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So I have 30 grapes now. 
And okay. I had two apples. And I had three oranges. Right. I had 10 blackberries. Yeah. <laughs> and I had five strawberries. Yeah. So all together, that's going to give me 50 pieces of fruit. We can add that. 50 pieces of fruit? Because look, wow. two and three using five, five and five gives me 10, another 10, 50. That's so a big 50 fruit in salad. Total. 50 in total. Yeah. The total always goes where in my fraction? Where does it go in my fraction, the total? Uh, the bottom in the yeah. denominator. So 50 would be in the denominator. And okay. then the grapes, that part was 30. So 30 grapes to 50 pieces of fruit. Exactly. Part okay. to whole. Okay. So if I put that in lowest terms, in this case, they both have 10, a factor of 10 in common. Sure. If I divide both by 10. Well, I should end up with three fifths. Exactly. Okay. This is going to be a three fifths. So for every three, the ratio wise, every three portions of grapes is a five total amount. So it's like it's a the fifth of the whole okay. Okay. is three fifths, right? Nice. So no way of looking at ratios. So sure. indeed, my fruit salad was mathematical. <laughs> yes, I love it. We have this really great mathematical fruit salad, which is super awesome. I love exactly. that. For showing you know, us that, uh, introducing ratios that way. Uh huh. And you know, the thing about it is, like, people don't realize how many real world connections there are with ratios in general. Like, we see mm -hmm. ratios all the time. And the biggest place we see it is in advertisements. So, sure. I actually have a video we can watch that I made where I show you how ratios apply to advertisements. That would be so cool. I would love to see that. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it up so to play, and then we'll come back here and chat. Okay, that sounds awesome. All right. Hi, my name is Dr. Valerie Camille Jones, and I am a math teacher. And most of the time, when people ask me about teaching math, they always say, Dr. Jones, you teach a lot of concepts that we never use. I mean, when are we ever gonna use this? Well, this video is to answer that question. When do you ever use ratios? When do you see ratios in the real world? And y'all, I'm here to tell you it's all the time. Let's start off with the most obvious way that you use ratios pretty much every day. When it comes to cell phones. Check this out. Cell phones are great and they're good for taking pictures and recording video. But you might not have realized that there are some restrictions when it comes to posting your videos or posting your pictures on different social media platforms. Most social media platforms want you to keep your videos or your pictures in a nice little square frame. In fact, hold on a second. <laughs> you see, here I am in my cell phone with a one to one ratio. It's a square ratio one to one. You might not have realized it. It's called an aspect ratio because it's how you're viewing your video or your pictures. And we use it all the time. Or maybe you use a ratio like this. <laughs> so check out this. This is a landscape ratio. It's wider, a 16 by nine. And this ratio is in lowest terms because there's not a factor that 16 and nine have in common. Most videographers want you to film in this ratio if you're using your cell phone, like I am right now. See, so you guys use ratios all the time. Let's think of different ways we might use ratios that don't involve cell phones. What about cooking? Oh my goodness, there are so many different ratios when you're cooking a meal, especially when you think about the recipes. It might call for one part this, and one part that, it might ask you to divide things up and give this portion of the meal to these portion of people. For example, I love ordering pizza, right? Or even cooking pizza. And I always have to figure out 
how many slices could I give each person so that way every part of the pizza gets distributed equally. So those are great examples of ratios that you see all the time, especially if you're like me and you like pizza. In fact, I wonder what she's cooking. I'm getting kind of hungry. Here's another example. Oh, I guess we're working out. <laughs> Have you ever tried yoga? Well, if you have, you fit this ratio because one out of four Americans have tried yoga in their life. This is another example of ratios. In fact, these type of ratios, these type of one in four or five and 10 or 10 in 100 Americans, these type of ratios are said all the time when you watch television or media because they like you to see how you relate to everyone around you. You see these kind of ratios on television all of the time. Did you realize the math that was involved with them? Needless to say, ratios in the real world are prevalent. And now that you've seen a couple, maybe the next time you see one on your TV screen, you'll think about this lesson. See you later. Wow, so that was really a cool video. Thank you so much, Dr. Jones, for checking that out. Yeah, you know, I always get this question from my students of, when will we ever use this? Or when is this ever gonna be used in real life? So I love to provide the real world connections for my students. So I thought I would bring it to this video. That sounds really cool. Yeah, that's totally, totally awesome. I love seeing ratios in real life. Hey, can I show you something? Because watching that video actually made me think about uh, something that I could show you. So can I show you something real That'd quick? That'd be great. I think that would be really cool. All right, so so um, check this out. Let me see, let me know when you can see see my screen here. Okay, so okay, you, I can see it. You can see this. All right, so we were talking about what ratios are a little bit. We actually introduced this idea. I distracted you from your fruit salad, which by the <laughs> way, that looked really delicious. I I would like it very much if you could. I uh, cannot wait to eat to it. Get that to me so I could eat a little fruit salad this afternoon. Uh, but anyway, so I really thought that this, this picture would also maybe help us explain a little bit more about what ratios are. So I've got two blue circles here and I've got three green squares, all right, in this starting ratio. And then underneath, I'm gonna make lots of representations of things that have that same base ratio, that same uh, initial value. So if I, can, if I click this along, what are some things that you know, Dr. Jones? Oh, this is fantastic. I love this because you can really see the equivalents, the equivalent ratios. Like through the pictures, I can see that for every two circles, there mm -hmm. are three squares. So That's all right. throughout, I can see that. And then when like leaving it right there with the 12, oh, go back to the 12 and 18. All right. All right. I can see that there's groupings of those two circles and three squares. So really, I can, I, I can obviously see there's, there's six of them. There's six rows where there's two circles and three squares, right? Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. That's right. And six also happens to be the factor that 12 and eight have, uh, 12 and 18 have in common. If you divide 12 by six, you'll get the two and divide 18 by six, you'll get the three. I love this. This is so this great. Is, it's visual. And you know, sometimes people are more visual than computational. And this is a great visual representation. I love how you pointed out the fact that I can see the six different sets of that original, of that original ratio, two to three. So really this ratio two to three is actually describing how these guys vary together. Because every time I click this, I'm adding three green squares and I'm adding two circles. Two circles. So these guys are varying together every yes. time. Yes. And we can talk about, hey, we've got this multiplicative piece so I can see that, hey, I have seven copies of a two to three ratio. But I also can see that when I click that right arrow, I just add one more copy, which means I add three, three green squares and two blue circles, which means I'm adding, I'm adding different amounts to each one, but I'm always adding the constant of two green, two blue circles rather, and three green squares every single time, right? That's, I'm always- Yes, and I love it. I love it because it's showing, like you just said, 
the multiplicative, the, the multiplying side of it and the dividing side of it. And to me, right. that's so important because I know that uh, when I first introduced ratios, when I taught sixth grade, I don't see sixth grade mm -hmm. anymore, but when I first did it, when I taught sixth grade, a yeah. lot of my sixth grade students would try to subtract like the 18 and two in this case, right? Yeah. And subtract the 27 and three and try to figure out the relationship that way instead of dividing or multiplying. Mm -hmm. So I love this because it really shows how using that type of that type of subtraction and addition would not be the way to compare these numbers. It would be right. multiplication or division. So I love that. Yeah, and we're gonna talk a lot more in our next video actually about comparing ratios. We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna actually be able to do that in our next video. Um, right. which we'll talk about comparing ratios, which is really cool. So Dr. Jones, thank you so much for joining me for this first Smart Space uh, video. And thank you so much for sharing your video. And um, I'm super excited to do another one with you. We'll talk, uh, we'll talk in a little bit, all right? Definitely, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Bye. we'll see you next time.